well, the floor, this is your floor, is pushing on you. Simple as that. Just like the floor is pushing on me now. This floor is pushing. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't fall over. And so I say to you, in what direction do you perceive gravity? And you say, this is the direction of gravity. Which is as real for you as it can be. Someone else is standing here. What do you think that person will think if I ask that person, what is the direction of gravity? Exactly. Radially outwards, opposing the push from the floor. So we could now uh, calculate how fast we have to rotate this spaceship to mimic the gravitational acceleration on Earth, which is 9.8 meters per second square. Let's call that 10, just to round it off a little. So we want the people who walk around in this corridor to have an acceleration, omega square r, which is about 10. So omega squared is about 0.1. So omega is about 0.3 radians per second. And so the period to go around is about 2 pi divided by omega, and that is about 20 seconds. And the tangential speed, that value for v, which is omega r, would then be 0.3 times 100, would be about 30 meters per second. Just to give you an idea for these numbers, which are by no means so ridiculous. What is interesting, that the perceived gravity, and this and therefore the centripetal acceleration, is zero here. There is nothing. There is no gravity there. And so that may be a good place for you to have your sleeping quarters. Now comes an interesting question. You can walk around here without any problem. Could you walk into these spokes? So when you were here, could you then walk towards your sleeping quarters. So you're standing here, and I first ask you in what direction is gravity? And you will say, well, gravity is in this direction. Can you now walk to your sleeping quarters? And what's the answer? You cannot. You cannot walk up against gravity. It would be like asking you to walk to the ceiling. How do you do that? An elevator or a staircase? That's fine. Because then you get to push from the stairs, when you step on the stairs. So you could have a staircase here, and that's the way this person could go here. But you cannot simply walk here, because gravity is always in this direction. Now let's suppose you are at your sleeping quarters, and you wake up in the morning, and you decide to go back, either in this direction, or this direction, or this direction, or that direction. It doesn't matter. Could you do that just by just going into this corridor and slowly, carefully starting moving. What would happen? Yeah? You would fly out. Fly out. It would be suicide. Because the moment that you are here, already you have maybe not a very large gravity, gravitational experience, but already it's beginning to grow on you. The farther out you are, the stronger it will be by the time you're here, it's 10 meters per second square. Remember, we had 10 meters per second square because we wanted to mimic the Earth. And so you literally crash. It's like falling into a shaft, jumping into a shaft. It's not quite the same because you start off with no pull on you. The moment you start going, however, the situation gets out of hand, and indeed, you will slam. So you can use the same elevator. You can use the same staircase. There's nothing wrong with that. Suppose. I have a liquid which has very, very fine, small particles in it. Extremely small. So small and so light that they will not sink to the bottom. So you always see some colored, milky type liquid. And here is that tube which has these fine particles. 
and the tube is sitting there, and the line of the liquid is obviously like this. Why? Well, that's obvious, because gravity is in this direction. And so the surface of a liquid is always perpendicular to gravity. You see here two glasses with water. The surface is perpendicular to gravity. Now I'm going to rotate this about this, this axis, going around like this. And I'm going to rotate it with an angular velocity omega. And this is at a distance r. Therefore, there is now a centripetal acceleration in this direction. And so the particles now say, aha, gravity is in this direction. This side of the glass and the liquid is pushing in this direction to provide this centripetal acceleration. So if you ask them where is gravity, they will say gravity is there. And this gravitational effect can be so much stronger than this one that you can forget this one. You will see that in a minute. You can completely forget this one. And so the liquid will say, I'm going to be perpendicular to gravity. And so the liquid will go like this, clunk. While it rotates around, the liquid in this tilted tube will be vertical. But not only that, the particles that are here experience now way stronger gravity than they did before, so I have made them heavier. They're no longer light particles, they are heavy particles. And what do heavy particles do? They have no problems in making it to the side. The reason why the light particles couldn't fall in the first place has to do with the fact that the molecules of the liquid due to their temperature, have a chaotic motion. We call that a thermal agitation. And these molecules would interact with these very small and light particles. And so the light particles would never make it to the bottom. The thermal agitation now of the liquid is the same. The temperature doesn't change, but the particles have become way, way heavier. And so the particles now go in the direction of gravity, which is here. And what you will see, if these particles are white, you will see white precipitation there, and the liquid will become clear. And that is something that I would like to demonstrate to you. But before I do that, I want to give you some numbers. Here we have a household, simple, nothing special centrifuge that is used in any laboratory. The centrifuge that we have has a RPM which is 3600 RPM. So 3600 RPM translates into a frequency of 60 hertz. So it goes around once in one sixtieth of a second. Omega is 2 pi times f is therefore roughly 360 radians per second. 360 radians per second. 